over 50. Does anything go into both negative 9 and 50? No, so you're done. The only thing that goes into here are 3, 9, and 1. Here you have 1, 2, 25, 5, and 10, but nothing, nothing that's shared. So we won't be able to simplify that. Sometimes that does happen. That's why we're able to stop on these fractions, right? When you get down to this far, you go, oh, I'm done. Because nothing divides both 7 and 11 besides 1. Now, what happens when you get some pretty heavy-duty fractions, like 30 over 108? And we don't want to spend a whole lot of time guessing at numbers. We don't want to spend a whole lot of time guessing at numbers. We don't have a calculator in the first couple tests. So how, how do we simplify something like this? Divide. Well, we could divide out twos if you wanted to. We could do that. But I'm going to give you another method. Here's a tool for your toolbox, OK? Do you remember the prime factorization? Yeah. If you prime factorize these numbers and write them as their product of primes, you will be able to simplify these pretty quickly. For instance, let me show you. I'm going to take the 30 over here and the 108 over here. 30. I know 2 goes into that. Do you remember doing that last time? So you know for a fact that 30 is 2 times 3 times 5. You with me, folks? Yes. OK, good. I know that's 54. I know that's 27. I know that's 3 times 9. I know that's 3 times 3. Now, I know I did that very fast, but we've done this already. So you should know how to get that prime factorization. So we know that 108 is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Hey, now's your hand if you're still with me on this prime factorization stuff. Are you okay with that? Check out what this does for you. If you know how to prime factorize, which, which you know how to do, that's the number, tr the, the number trees that we just did, factor trees. Watch what happens. Now, this is, isn't so great for small numbers. You're never going to do this on something like 30 over 42. It takes too long. You're never going to do it on something like 30 over 45. It takes too long. But on something where it's a large number, maybe even typically bigger than that, you might want to try this. Because what this allows you to do is write out these factors. 2 times 3 times 5. 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. Do you see any factors that are shared? Yeah. Cross them out. Cross them out. So if we do that, it doesn't doesn't make us think of the biggest number. It lets us just cross out those factors because we can make one out of them because we're making one. Make two over two is one. Three over three is one. We can cross out those factors and multiply what's remaining. Raise your hand if you're okay with that. Okay. Just don't forget that you have some things that you didn't cross out. So here on the numerator, what are we going to get on the numerator? Five. So 2 and 2, 3 and 3. This 3, should this 3 cross out just one 3 or all three threes? do you think? One one three. Just 1, yeah. Then we have a 2 times a 3 times a 3. What's 2 times 3 18. times 3? Say it again. 18. That's your completely reduced fraction. This will work every time. Every time. And it will be completely reduced if you do it correctly. So you look down here, can you reduce 5 or 18? Heck no. It, if you would have, it would have been done right there. That's a final answer. Did that make sense for you? Yeah. Okay, so it's a lot longer. It's a lot longer of a process than just doing our, our biggest number. That's why we t I teach most of it this way, right? But when you deal with those numbers that are like, oh my gosh, uh, 312 over 694, you go, come on. Biggest number, do the prime factorization. It will take you less time unless you have a calculator, which you won't have on your test. So that's just another tool for your toolbox there. Hey, by the way, will this stuff, will this simplification work with I have negatives? What do you think? Like negative 64? Negative 64 over 20. Now that's small enough that we won't need our prime factorization. We'll just look for the largest number that divides both. Is there a number that divides both 64 and 20? Have you thought of it? Think of the number that divides both 64 and 20. 
Yeah, two works, but four is bigger. Let's use four. Four goes into both those numbers. What do I do with the negative? What do I do with the negative? Well, nothing in our process here is actually changing the signs of our numbers. Are you with me on that? Nothing's changing the signs. So I know if I start with a negative fraction, I'm just simplifying it, I'm going to end with a negative fraction. Other than that, we can just leave that thing out front and forget about it. So in our fraction, we'll say, okay, I know that 4 is going into both of our, our numerator and denominator. On the numerator, 4 times what gives you negative 64? Negative 64. Good. So then you have two options here. I want you to look at both options. First option is you can leave the negative out front the whole time and put 16. Okay, you could do that. You see what I'm talking about? Negatives out front, no problem. Or you could say negative 16 like that. Either way is fine, as long as you have that negative. What you can't do, you can't just miraculously lose the negative. Okay, that will mess your answer up. You're seeing that, right? Yeah. If you lose the negative, that, that's, that's bad mojo. I don't think I've ever said that word before. That's bad mojo. You can't do that one. So don't lose the negative, you'll be fine. So here we know that negative 64 is 4 times negative 16. 20 is 4 times how much? 5. Can we cross anything out? 4. 4. This is being, that is being multiplied, right? Do we have the same numbers? Yeah. Let's do it. You have the same numbers that are being multiplied, cross them out. What do we have remaining? Just don't lose that negative. Notice how that negative we could have just left out front the whole time, it would have been just fine as well. So either way on that. Let's try one on your own. Let's do. Oh, by the way, one more thing I wanted to tell you about. Negative 16 over 5, is that simplified? No. Oh, no. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about what simplified means. Simplified means there are no common factors on the numerator and denominator. That means that no number divides both the top and the bottom. I want you to look at negative 16 and 5. Does any number besides 1 divide negative 16 and 5? No. no. Let me see again. Is it simplified? Yes. No. Does any number divide 16 and 5? Is this number simple? Is this fraction simplified? Yes. Absolutely. You need to get in your head that there's a difference between simplification and writing something as a mixed number. There's a difference there. Mixed number means 3 and 1 fifth, or negative 3 and 1 fifth. That's what that would be, negative 3 and 1 fifth. That would be a mixed number. If I'm not asking you for a mixed number, you don't have to give it to me. So is this simplified? Yeah, you're done. Simplified. Simplified, simplifying, means you just take out the common factors. That's what it means. Writing as a mixed number means you go one more step and do three and one fifth in this case. Do you see the difference there? Let me want to show that. Okay, good. With that in mind, try this example that I'm about to give you. Let's do negative 72 over 26. Looking for a, the biggest common factor. That's the shared. A number that uh, divides both the numerator and denominator that's shared. We're going to write that as a multiple of those numbers, and then we're going to simplify that. Remember, don't lose that negative. Find a number that goes into both 72, negative 72, and 26. Four. Four doesn't go into 26. Two. Two. Sometimes, are we going to get twos? Yeah. Sometimes two might be the biggest one. Is two the biggest one here? Yes. Not unless 13 works. I don't think 13 is going to work. 26 doesn't work. Does it? 
So we'd write this as 2 times negative 36 over 2 times 13. 2 times negative 36 over 2 times 13. I need to know how many people got that. Not so much. Do you see it now? Yeah. If you didn't get it, that's okay. You're still learning this stuff. But do you see where this is coming from now? Not sure if you do. Okay. Guys in the middle? You okay? All right. So 2 times negative 36, that's given us negative 72. 2 times 13, I might want to keep that in parentheses because that's been our habit the whole time, make that negative in parentheses. Make, make sure you know it's not subtraction, it is multiplication. Since we have the same factor on both the numerator and denominator, we're really making a 1 out of that. 2 over 2 is 1. So we can reduce this fraction to negative 36 over 13. Hey, is that simplified? Are there any factors left that can, be, can divide both 13 and 36? Then you're done. I'm not asking for a mixed number here. You don't have to give me that. Which way should I feel okay with what we've done so far today? Good, okay. Now, you'll notice the next example has a lot of variables. Let's see if we can extend this idea to that, that problem. First thing I want you to do, ignore the variables for a second. Can you reduce two, uh, 6 over 2? Yes. What number goes into both of them? 2. So I could write this as 2 times 3 over 2 times 1. You're with me on that, right? That's yes. 6 over 2. Now, how about those x's? What does x squared actually mean? So I could write this x times x. Is that okay with you? Is this still 6x squared? Yes. Sure. How about the x to the third power? What's that mean? X times x times x. So since this is 6 times x squared, 2 times 3 times x times x, 2 times x cubed, 2 times 1 times x times x times x, do you see any common factors? Things yeah. that are shared are both the numerator and denominator that are multiplied together. The twos, yeah, for sure, we get the twos. That's like what we did before. We could certainly extend that two concept of this. How many of them? So we have x's here. These x's are shared. Now, just because they're variables doesn't mean they can't be factors as well. They're still being multiplied, right? They're still there. So we can still simplify them like we would do a normal number. Those x's are gone. These x's are gone. How about that x? Can I cross that x out? No. Tell me exactly what I have left on the numerator. 3 over 1. 3 over 1. So this x, if this x is left on the denominator, it has to stay on the denominator. So we have 3 for sure. 1 times x is how much? 1x. 1x, so I'm going to write what? X plus x. That's your answer. That's as simple as you can make it. Let's try one more. I'll have you, you do one more on your own and we'll be done. Fifty nine A cubed over fifty six, I'm sorry, forty nine A cubed over fifty six A squared. First thing we're looking to do is simplify the numbers. Those numbers are being multiplied by those variables, which means we can simplify them. So we're looking for a number that goes into both forty nine and fifty six at the same time, and you tell me seven. Seven, seven times what for the top? Seven. And seven times that's 49, that's 56. We have the same factor here, that's great. Now we're going to think about those a's. a cubed, which you told me